What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. You know, back in the day, it was a meme that uh, you could download more frames. Well, now it is possible to actually download more frames per second. And this is achieved by using an app called Lossless Scaling. This is an app that is actually in Steam. So here we are in the Steam page, and this app has been in development since 2018. I've actually had it on my computer for quite a long time, but just recently they came out with a 3.0 model for frame generation, and it works really well. You can do up to 2x, 3x, or even four times as much frame rate. Now this is a paid app. It costs $6.99, but I'd say that's worth it for the crazy performance that you can get by using this application. So for this example, I'm going to be using a highly modified version of Skyrim. This is a mod list that is called NGVO, Next Generation Visual Overhaul. It's the same mod list author as Lorim, and that's Biggie Boss. And all this mod does is adds all the visuals and just not all the quests. So it's essentially Lorim without all the additional quests and whatnot. All right, so here we are in game and I'm getting about 67 FPS. My system is a 4080 Super graphics card with a AMD 9800X3D CPU and then 32 gigs of RAM. And I'm getting around 67 FPS, which is pretty good considering the fact that I am running this game at 2164K. Kind of shoots into the 70s when I'm walking around through here. So now let's go back and check out this app where we can get the frame rate nearly doubled. So if I go to lossless scaling here, these are some of my settings and you can copy whatever settings you'd like. They just recently released the 3.0 model of frame generation. And for this video, I'm not gonna be messing with the scaling, but you can upscale your game using some different methods here, including FSR or even like integer scaling. But for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna be messing around with this frame generation. So you've got your mode, this is X2, there's X3 and X4. X2 essentially means it's inserting one frame, whereas X3 inserts two frames, X4 inserts three frames. Got my cursor clipper set to on, maximum latency to three, sync mode is just default. G-Sync support, draw FPS, that'll show us an overlay of what the reported FPS actually is. And then the capture API. So this is an interesting one. A lot of people use the DXGI and that seems to work better for their system. However, when I use DXGI on my system, I was noticing quite a bit of stuttering and the frames were kind of like jumping around. And as soon as I switched over to WGC, it started working better. I read online that WGC actually works better with the Windows 11 24H2, which is the latest version of Windows 11. So I guess just depending on your system, kind of mess around with these two just, just to see which one works best. So then once you've set all your settings, we can go back up to the top here and we can hit this scale button and it's gonna start counting down for five seconds. Within that five second period, we wanna jump back to the game that we want to scale. So we've got a counter C up there. I'm gonna jump back to Skyrim here. And then it just kicked in right there. And you can see in the very top left that the frame rate says it's at 55. And then with the frame generation, it's at 110, 113, 108. And this literally makes this game like crazy smooth. Like, it is awesome. Let's go ahead and test out some of the other modes. So if I change this up to X3, it can be a 3X. And this is where things get a little interesting because you can start seeing some like ghosting on your screen and whatnot, which is why you might want to keep it at like X2. But however, X3 isn't too terrible in terms of some of the ghosting effects. So we just hit the scale, we went back to Skyrim here. And you can see in the very top, it popped up. It says 43 slash 130. So now we actually are getting 130 FPS. And this really is just like buttery smooth right now. Like it is awesome. 
It's kind of hard to capture that for a YouTube video since the frame rate is capped at 60 FPS for a YouTube video at 2160p. However, I can still show you guys what kind of performance I'm getting. So you can see the reported frame rate through MSI Afterburner's overlay says 45 FPS. That is just what it seems to be thinking that the game is actually reporting. Whereas the scaler is doing some different methods with your screen in order to insert additional frame rate. So this is kind of like an unofficial frame generation, essentially. So any games that don't have native frame generation support, you can use this tool with all of them. However, like I said earlier, just be aware that you might see some kind of weird graphical like glitches. So if I go back and forth on this wall, I don't know if I can capture this, but you see kind of those white lines. Essentially, it's like causing some like kind of weird graphical glitches the higher you go. So now let's go ahead and try X4 here. Unscale, change this up to X4. Hit scale, go back to game, give it a second here. And there the overlay kicked in, in the very top left. And it says we're now getting 170 FPS, which is just absolutely crazy. And it really is 170 FPS. Now, you can kind of see like there's kind of like a like a rubber band effect going on. If you look at some of these scenes, it's kind of hard to, like I said, to show through YouTube. But there's kind of like a rubber band thing going on. It's not too bad. It's still very playable. And the other thing, if I like kind of like look down at the ground at the very bottom of the screen, you can kind of maybe see like some blurring going on. It's once again, not too bad. And the same thing kind of like around my sword that I don't think is going to be able to be captured with my recording software. And it's also not very bad at all. Like I have to like really be looking at it. But if I look at like the edge of the sword as I'm like walking by certain structures, I'm going to see kind of like a blurring thing going on. And same thing like with my overlay on the left side, there's kind of like a blurring thing going on, but it's still at right now 167 157 fps so what we can do depending on what kind of monitor you have and what resolution you're running we can go into our emb settings so i can go ahead and hit shift enter and it's going to bring up my emb settings here let's just kind of move these over to this side you can go down to your limiter and since I have a 144 hertz screen, I can limit the FPS to 36. So I've already set it here to 36. And then I can do this little checkbox here. And actually, before we do this, I think I do need to unscale. Unscale. And then let's go ahead. And at the very top, you can scroll up and hit save and apply changes. Give it a second here. Okay, so there we go. Just to make sure it took the settings. Yep, we're good to go. So now hit shift enter. Your ENB settings might be a different hotkey, by the way, depending on which mod list you're using with Skyrim specifically. But we have now capped our frame rate at 36. And yeah, you can tell that it's like 36 FPS. It's, it's very glitchy. So now let's go back to our lossless scaling here. We're still on the X4 mode. And now we're going to go ahead and hit scale. Go back to our game before it counts down. And there it goes. It's scaled in. And you can see it says 36 slash 144. So now we've capped this game at our monitor's refresh rate. And it just makes everything just buttery smooth. Now, again, I'm still am having some issues with some like kind of weird, like blurring effects going on. However, this program has been in development since 2018, and I have no doubt that they'll eventually iron out some of these 
graphical issues with their frame generation and probably even create more settings that can go even higher than X4. So we'll have to see what they can come up with. But for right now, this is a really great way to increase your frame rate in any game. This is not just Skyrim, like literally any game. But it does help with these highly modified versions of Skyrim where you're just like pushing your system to the absolute max. And even just capping that frame rate too, the other thing is it alleviated my GPU a little bit. So instead of it running at 100%, now it's only running around like 80 to 85% and it's keeping our temperatures down as well and allowing our GPU to boost clock a little higher. And really quick, let's go ahead and check out like a place like Riverwood, where it really does take a lot of GPU power to run through this area. Oh, let's go ahead and set it to daytime. I know I'm doing it the old school way. I'm sure there's other ways to do it. All right, we've got a little snow out here. Still looks pretty good. So yeah, you look, we're still capped at 144 frames per second because it's just trying to get 36 out of the system. And it's still pushing up my GPU around like 90, but it is like an absolutely butter smooth experience on my end. And again, you still are having some of that kind of like weird blurring ghosting effect going on when you're running and whatnot. But if you can look past some of those, like again, like I said, this is a really great way to increase any game's performance. So anyway, that'll do it for this video. If you guys have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. I'm going to be coming out with some more videos in regards to performance testing. I'm in the current process of testing out Pure Dark's DLSS, trying to see if I can figure out how to implement that into my mod list. I'm also going to be coming out with a video that will be showcasing lore trim on my ROG Ally using a combination of community shaders with the lossless scaling so that it is playable and we have a crazy modified version of Skyrim on the go. So if any of that interests you, subscribe to the channel and as always, have a wonderful day.